Stay for an extra week. So you mentioned a lot of, uh, you know, you've done television, you wrote books, you've done musical, theater, Broadway, everything. Is there one particular thing that? That's what's brought me through Austin before. I've done a couple of shows. I did uh, Sound of Music here, and I did Pippin uh, here, uh, which has brought me through through town before. But one, what? No. Was there? Is there one particular thing that just? Makes your heart beat the fastest, you know. That you either either excitedly oh, or nervously. Me, of the time, you know, of of, uh, of the different of mediums. The different things you've done. Live performing is by, uh, is the most exhilarating. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and uh, musical theater, I think it kind of brings all that together: acting, singing, movement, dancing. Which was the which of your brain cast castmates? Which was your favorite one to work with? After 6 p.m., Florence Henderson. <laughs> um, Chris Knight and I get along very well. So Peter Brady for me. Not a Brady name can only go so far. I'm doing stuff that's new, but I'm great Brady too. <gasps> the ball in the marsh snow, sing the chorus and it goes, I'm Brady is yes, not the real Brady. All the other great Brady's are not syndicated. So if you ain't great Brady, please show. Please show. Yeah, please grow up. All right, there you go. Woo! Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, we are finishing up the third day. Now, right behind me over here is photo op. If you all don't know what photo ops is, it's where you can get your photo taken with a celebrity, um, whatever that celebrity that you want to get that picture taken with besides at their booth. And you get to have a little bit of a conversation with them, like a 30 second conversation. It's great. Um, I did the same thing with Michael when I went to um, when I went to MegaCon, um, got to talk to Michael for 30 seconds, and, and that was it. So, but I went around twice, so I kind of in total got to have a conversation with him for like 60 seconds. That's up to a minute, so it's not so bad. He's a nice guy, but other than that, you have celebrities that are here that are pretty nice um, over here. So, um, those of you that want to get something to eat can get something to eat those of you that are busy and those of you that don't know that have not been to a wizard world that have not been to a comic-con it's a full couple days you are staying busy 100% so it's not just like go look around and um, purchase stuff there's a lot going on so um, not only that we will finish up this review view of Wizard World in Austin, Texas with Tommy coming soon. <laughs> So this is Chris with Top Level Media and I'm with 
Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Who are you with? Devon Dudley. Ah, there you go. See, I got to be formally introduced. You just can't ask me my name. If you don't know who I am, then I can't do the interview with you. Right. One, one of the Dub Dudley boys, besides Bubba Ray. Yes. So, uh, how come Bubba Ray is not here? Well, Bubba Ray kind of does his own thing sometimes. He's in a different organization. I'm still with WWE. Uh, we are. I'm a producer now, working backstage. Still getting the ring every so often. But uh, Bubba does his thing, and I do, and I do mine. Right. So, I wanted to ask you, there's a lot of fans out there that don't know. What inspired you to become a wrestler in the first place? Watching Hulk Hogan back in the 80s and watching his era. Uh, Hogan, Steamboat, um, Roddy Piper, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, Don Morocco, the Magnificent One, uh, and the, the British Bulldogs, the Heart Foundation, the Killer Bees. So many lists of people during that era had allowed me to be able to be entertained and to be able uh, to enjoy my childhood even better. Like some people tell me that I've uh, made their childhood good. Right, that's really awesome. So, what are one of your throughout WWE? Uh, what are one of your favorite matches of all time? Well, other than WWE, I mean, I guess it would have to be one of the matches in ECW uh, where we put Balls Mahoney through a table in Chicago, or it might have been Detroit. That was one. Uh, a second one had to be probably Naces and Eights uh, TNA, and uh, that was when I guess I was revealed as the Sergeant of Arms uh, under the mask uh, when Sting and Hogan revealed me and I guess you know again one of the biggest matches having in uh, WWE was the TLC match right that's really awesome yeah. that's good um, what are do you have any funny stories about being in the ring or um, any fun times <laughs> I think we all had funny times funny stories uh, me being scared of heights um, you know doing those TLC matches screaming at Jeff to stop kicking me because edge had moved the ladder and we're hanging 25 feet to 30 feet up in the air before I took the uh, Nestle Punch. So, uh, that, to this day, uh, Jeff and and Matt and uh, Edge and Christian, even Bubba make fun of me because I was crying on top of that ladder. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So, what would you say to younger talent that want to be in the business, to that want to be a wrestler? Um, yeah. Learn your craft. Uh, take your time. Do what you got to do. Learn how to slow down. Learn how to be patient. Most importantly, find a reputable school with somebody who's been somewhere. Not a guy who's going to open up a wrestling school in a warehouse, put a ring in there, and try to teach you how to wrestle. If that person's never been anywhere, they're not going to be able to get you anywhere. So find a reputable school that will help you to be able to develop your talent and your skills. And that way, they can direct you to a, in the right direction to where now you can become that superstar. Right. So do you have a Twitter account, Facebook account? Absolutely. I have the Twitter Twitter account. Uh, it's Testify Devon, minus the E, no slash, just D V O N. And then Instagram, it's uh, Testify Devon as well. Uh, I also have a, a, per well, I have a personal Facebook. Uh, I don't let, it's just my family and friends. Uh, but for the most part, um, just the Instagram and the Twitter. All right, well, that's all the questions I have for you. All right, my man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for your time. I appreciate it. All right. All right, my friend. All right. So, uh, we are. Where are we this time? Um, that's a great question. Oh, we're in Austin. Austin. Okay, Austin. And I'm here with uh, Thomas I. Nicholas 10. What have you been up to? Um, well, I'm still in post-production, but getting very close to finishing Adverse, uh, my newest film that I produced, uh, that I play the lead protagonist in, alongside Lou Diamond Phillips, Penelope Ann Miller, Sean Astin, and Mickey Rourke. So we're looking at a um, spring release, I guess like end of March, um, but more information on the uh, release date will be shared very soon on our social media and in the press. Right. Can you talk about what uh, the film is about? Yeah, I play a rideshare driver with a questionable past um, that has to, or that attempts to pay off a crime syndicate to save my sister. Right on, that's good. So that's that's good. Do you have any other films that are coming out? Um, 
nothing. Something just came out recently, which was Zeroville. Uh, just hit theaters in September with uh, James Franco, Will Ferrell, Seth Rogen, Danny McBride, Craig Robinson, Megan Fox. I played Martin Scorsese. Um, so we did like a little bit of theatrical. And yeah, and then I'm gearing up to shoot another film next year that I can't really say too much about yet. Right. Well, I'll find out next year about it. But until then, um, you're staying busy with your music for those people out there that don't know that you're an artist. So what kind of music do you play? Uh, I play rock. Um, I'm a 90s kid, so there's a bit of a 90s tinge to my music for sure. Uh, and I am currently writing for album number seven right now. Album, num album number seven. So what's the biggest album you have right now? Uh, biggest as far as... As far as um, people people playing the song over and over and over? Um, I would say my 2012 EP that had uh, the song My Generation on it. Um, I mean, really, My Generation is our biggest single simply because we got onto the soundtrack album of American Reunion. So it probably has the most spins due to that fact. Right. So do you have any reunions coming up with American Pie or anything? Um, well, I'm headed to Saudi Arabia to uh, Riyadh uh, this weekend, and Shannon Elizabeth and Chris Owen, who played the Shermanator, will also be there. Um, so I guess it's sort of a mini reunion. Right. So on American Pie, who is your favorite one to work with? Who do you get along most with on set? Um, you know, I mean... Back in the day, I, I was already kind of friends with Chris Owen um, beforehand, and and Shannon was always, I think, the most unaffected by uh, the success of the film. She she always remained the most even keeled. So ironic that I would be going to uh, another country with both of them. Um, not to say that they they're, they're the ones that I get along with, or that I don't get along with anyone else. Not to say that because everyone's really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they win by, like, a tenth of a point. Right, right. Okay, so for those um, out there, subscribers, audience members, even your um, followers, people that ask you mostly on Twitter, um, such as, are there any behind-the-scenes things that you could share about Rookie of the Year or bloopers or the experience of working on set with any of the actors, Gary Busey? Um, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of things that I could share or have shared. It, it's always the toughest question because, you know, you're talking about three months of filming, so lots of stories sort of pop into my mind uh, that I have told over the years. Um, so it's hard for me to pinpoint one. Is there anyone in particular you want to know about? Gary Busey. Okay. Um, my, uh, my favorite favorite Gary Busey story uh, is simply everyone always asks if he's crazy or uh, you know what he's like and uh, my response has been and will always be that he was the nicest to me and I know this because he once carried me by my underwear 25 feet across the lunchroom in front of a hundred crew members but remember he was the nicest to me Right, right, exactly. Well, that's good. So, um, pretty much, if um, anybody wants to have any uh, info on you or your music, where do they go? Um, well, Tin Band, T I N Band, is pretty much the easiest way to find me. It's the website, the handle for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. Not that there's any music on Snapchat. Um, and yeah, so Tin Band, even though it's just Thomas Nicholas Band. I put the I back in for the acronym. I don't know. I just want to confuse people. So hopefully you're as confused as I am. Right. And um, one more question is, for those who want to pursue acting, music, and as such as a career yourself, what would you tell people out there that are trying to follow their dreams? Um, never give up. You can have 
anything that you want and achieve anything that you want as long as you never start stop as long as you never stop working toward that goal so um, most of the time and if you look online or read stories about this um, failure is is a part of success so it's okay to fail um, and we learn a lot more from our failures than we do our successes and most of the time people who the I guess the only surefire way to in to fail indefinitely is to stop trying so you will never fully fail if you never give up well thank you very much for your time thank you all right bye <laughs> hey Chris so what has it been like for you at Wizard World Wizard World in Texas has been good, Tommy. I have done a tour. I've done a full tour, and I have done um, some great interviews. The people that have came that I have discussed with um, off camera have had a lot of fun. A lot of people have admitted that this is their first Comic Con, and they some people have been to another Comic Con, but some haven't. And so, um, when you come to a, your first comic-con you know, some fans don't know what to do the reaction of celebrities or things that are happening but it's a great feeling and great environment to have and not only that um, there's a lot to do with comic-con right Tommy uh, yes so uh, what can you do at a comic-con what can't you do at a Comic Con? Um, Tommy, <laughs> you're talking about um, what can you do at a Comic Con? You can go to panels. Um, you could also um, go get artwork done um, or purchase artwork that's already been made. Get face paintings. It's kind of like being at Disneyland, but it's Comic Con. So, what's this? What is this Comic Con compared like to like Lexington? Lexington, um, it's different. You have a lot of Comic Cons that are different. We've been to MegaCon, um, uh, we've been to SuperCon, we've been to Lexington, like you said just now. It's a different experience every time because people in Lexington, they're great, they're awesome, they're laid back, they're chilled. People in um, Florida, they're awesome, great, fun, um, exciting. It just depends on what kind of Comic Con that you go to. The Comic Con that um, is in Texas is very fun. It felt like um, it was more laid back and chilled, um, and it was great. That's wonderful. How big is the convention center compared to other ones we've been to? Well, eventually I'm on the roof and this floor floor, uh, being on the fourth floor, you know, you're, you know, you get the Hilton right over here. Um, and so when you get the Hilton right over here, um, this convention center is pretty big. It is very big. It's great big. And, um, a comparison to Lexington, let's say Lexington is bigger. Megacon, much bigger. Um, super Supercon, way bigger. Uh, Utah, uh, you're talking about way, way, way bigger. I felt like going to miles, um, a few miles to get somewhere such as celebrities and all. Well, this Comic Con, you go in through the front doors, you have to go down and around, but it's great, you know, because you have this front stage right there. When you have the front stage, it's perfect. And then you go back and see different things, celebrities, uh, things that they have set up as far as artwork. So would you recommend this Comic-Con to uh, other people? Yes, I recommend this uh, Comic-Con to other people. So basically, if you are in the Austin area, Dallas area, if you are a Comic-Con fan, if you're a Wizard World fan, if you want to meet your favorite celebrities such as Claudia Wells, got style by the way or if you want to meet people such as Green Arrow people from The Flash people from Smallville Tom Welling Michael Rosenbaum John Glover uh, if you want to meet wrestlers such as Steve on Dudley uh, Bubba Ray Dudley uh, your favorite wrestler look up the guests on the schedule and see who is actually there and basically um, you know you meet greet um, usually it's uh, 60 bucks 
folks to get a picture selfie done with an autograph or it costs more than that if you want something bigger done with like Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum together it's usually bigger um, but it's also great um, it's a fantastic thing to do if you're um, wanting to meet that favorite celebrity of yours like I said well that is amazing Chris what was your favorite part of this Comic-Con? My favorite part? Mm. Just meeting everybody, and not only just meeting everybody, uh, doing a tour, putting in some interviews, uh, getting some interviews with some celebrities, um, seeing Claudia Wells, it's always, it's always a pleasure seeing Claudia Wells, and um, it's just uh, running around and doing press work, you know, and going to other panels. That's the best thing of all. Those of you that have not been to a Comic-Con with panels, a panel is where the celebrity star goes in, talks about their TV show, movie, history, etc 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 you get to go up there and ask some questions and so that's really an awesome thing um, to uh, have that as far as that experience just because um, you're having fun and you get to see um, what they're like in person so I could say the panels are the best thing ever at a comic-con just because you find out oh okay this happened on set I didn't know that Wow or this happened on that movie or that movie or this was not supposed to happen but it did happen you know vice versa you know what I mean Tommy yeah okay so those of you that are in the Austin area like I said Dallas area uh, Texas overall um, San Antonio um, or even um, if you're in a different city and you've always wanted to come to Texas and you wanted to come to a comic-con this is a perfect spot and I will put links down on the section down below as far as interviews go don't forget to subscribe click that like button and check us out next time and we'll see you later bye bye